Welcome everybody and I am super excited about today's guest on my uh, podcast. If you're listening, thanks for tuning in on YouTube. Uh, hello from me again. And today I have um, Justin Michael, uh, aka The Machine or The Honey Badger. And I've been following Justin for uh, for a while now on uh, on all things uh, social. He's based over in, um, uh, in LA, are you, Justin? I'm just north of LA in uh, Santa Barbara, a little Santa town Barbara. called Carpinteria. Perfect. And Justin is about to uh, release uh, his new book, How to Unleash the Modern Sales Stack, where he talks about TQ. So we have IQ, your intelligence quotient. We have uh, EQ, your emotional quotient. And now we have uh, TQ. Before we get into TQ, um, Justin, over to you. A bit of your background, a bit of your story, and then let's, uh, let's go. Yes. So I think what's really unique about me is I've sent a million emails out of a sequencer and oh gasp GDPR. I get it. But this was three years ago. (laughs) Not to say it's okay. I had a hundred startups that I was working with in a project called Outbound Works from the co-founder of Datanize, Ben Sardella. And I was uh, working on fully automated sales development. We had the best confluence of human and machine. I've worked for um, companies like LinkedIn and Salesforce, but then just tons of startups where you have this existential threat of like, we're an unknown brand. You know, we can't just pick up the phone and say, hey, it's, you know, Justin at Oracle. I'm selling for a little challenger brand that nobody's heard of. So opening became the new closing very early. It's like just getting the meeting was so hard. So I experimented with vast amounts of technology stacks to uh, to do this and scale it and automate it because I kind of had to be everywhere at once and in all the regions worldwide. So that was the first first order of problem. Um, And I could go on and on, but I essentially saw the future Mm -hmm. because I had a chance with that company to apply vast um, (laughs) financial resources trying to solve this. We acquired a (laughs) Swedish injection company of actual AI, which injected sentences into outreach. We mm-hmm. tested every flavor of personalization at wild levels of scale. Yeah. And so, you know, when I see studies like Jeremy Donovan at Sales Loft looking at 6 million email sample sizes, which was really eerie about reading his book, Leading Sales Development, great mm-hmm. book, plug, um, was how many things I nailed empirically just using the scientific method, just actually sending that many emails. So yeah. what's the subject line? What's the call to action? What's the salutation? Does it have to have a signature? Just a lot of the tactics. Um, what I found is that there is an SDR AE industrial complex. I know Aaron Ross. I know Mary Lou mm-hmm. Tyler. The book is, is brilliant because it mm-hmm. takes the Henry Ford assembly line specialization model and it breaks the funnel into SDRs and AEs. Yep. What's happened now is there's hundreds and hundreds of vendors. We're all sitting in sales navigator and LinkedIn says, you can't have the email. So we go to zoom info or yep. in, in Europe, we go to Lucia or Cognizant. And then we find the email and phone number and then we call that. And then we do that 20 or 30 times a day. We have to personalize and then there's eight hours. We're done. So mm-hmm. now we have to use a sequencer. Okay, now we have to sit on the front of the website and use Drift and interact. Oh, our bosses have to listen on Chorus and Gong. Okay, and it just goes and goes and goes and it becomes this layer cake, this crazy stack. And then the stack sort of chokes us out because you know, we're only selling about 30, 37% of the time. Mm-hmm. So my mission and vision is to unlock the rep. And so as this tech gets smarter and more and more top funnel automation comes out and there's better and better tech, the more we fuse with human and machine, we work on our technology quotient, Mm -hmm. right? And most reps are technology avoidant. There's low adoption. Mm -hmm. Do you know anyone sending every in-mail every month? You know, are you using the LinkedIn sales navigator app? Yeah. Are you running Boolean searches? Like I can give you questions. I'm just with my book saying, Let's become 5% better. Let's dust off the tech stack where we are remotely and start learning more about it. So that's sort of where this all comes from. Uh, And uh, yeah, I was, yeah. So I was involved in a, in, in a book called combo prospecting as a case study as the cyborg rep featuring. Yeah. Yeah, Tony Hughes, who's an awesome author down in uh, Sydney, Australia. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, there's a lot to be said for omni channel blends. I'm a proponent of all of it. Yeah. Um, other forms of automation are like connect and sell and Orem and connect leader. I experimented with these systems. You're basically yeah. dialing thousands of times and getting connected every 43 times. And that's like a form of contact automation because yeah. in 2007, when I got started in SAS, I'd call 10 prospects and seven would pick up the phone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, now you have to dial thousands to get yeah. some on the phone and some prospects don't actually answer the phone. So it's yeah. important to be using phone automation, email automation. You can't really use LinkedIn automation. There's a bunch of uh, yeah. 
rules. people trying, but there's yeah. rule. LinkedIn is like, <laughs> if everybody gets spammed even more, yeah, exactly. right? Alexander's going to leave the site and then we don't really have this great site anymore. So um, there's an art and science to all of this. And I'd love to delve in more today, hear your views and, you know, attack the hardest subjects that you have. hundred percent. And, um, you know, for me, so if we, you know, kind of unpacking the, the, the TQ bit and I've got your, uh, you know, do you have the basic sales T, TQ? And some of the questions, do you have Google alerts running? Can you Google with speed and efficiency? Can you export data, import data, CRM sequencer? Can you build pivot, pivot tables in Excel? Can da, 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 and, and it goes on, Trade.io, Zapier and Workato. And, you know, some of that is, is quite technical. And um, you know, do you have a, a technical background? Have you come from a background where you did a degree in science or technology or computer science and that side of things or, um, or, or what have you? Hey, so yeah, my, um, I have a brother who's a computer scientist at Google for 14 years. He was one of the leading Python coders in the world and studied under Guido von Rosum who wrote Python. Right. That's a person who's close to me for 25 years pushing me technically. Yeah. I found I had to upskill my technology quotient and my technical capability. I've been in the mobile marketing industry for 13 years in MarTech and ad tech, which showed mm -hmm. me the explosion of vendors and vendor yeah. consolidation. I had to learn to demo these products mm -hmm. and services. And so I had to get very technical. A lot of times my sales engineer wasn't there. So yeah. I would have vast questions on APIs, integrations, mm -hmm. I would call myself technically curious. I've interviewed on the product side with some yeah. very big companies because I've had to get so deep into mobile tech stacks. And because yeah. I come from Salesforce and exact target and marketing automation, mobile marketing automation was almost even more uh, advanced. Yeah. And um, you did see the major clouds getting into this with mobile and then advertising and user acquisition really does get into deep learning and AI because you have enough big data when mm -hmm. you're spending $50 million on Facebook and Google and these massive platforms and doing all this advanced targeting and retargeting. Um, you really have to become technically sophisticated to get the return on investment. Um, so I would say I'm as technical as maybe any field seller there is, almost like at a sales engineer level. And mm -hmm. I've just seen a ton of business models in tech. So I push myself constantly just because of my brother to like go a little deeper into yeah. how the tech works. So, you, so, so yeah. you've had, so on that point though, you've had the, you've had the advantage that it's been basically, you know, you've been surrounded by this with, you know, your, your life basically. So, you know, so far. And, you know, I do a lot of work in, in the legal sector, professional services, and there's this kind of debate going on. Do lawyers need to know how to code to start to understand all the technology? So inversely, for a sales rep to AE, SDR, to kind of truly benefit from, benefit from this, do they actually have to be able to have a deep dive understanding of how this all, all works? Because some may look at that and go, you know what, I'm just not that technically oriented. My brain just isn't programmed that way but sometimes you know when you're seeing this when your sales navigator today is working with you know seasoned sellers and even sales navigator at a basic level it's okay um this this and this and their brains just aren't really wired that way so how does somebody start to even you know you talked about shifting that five percent ten percent what are the basics that an, an SDR or an AE or whatever the future job title is, or for the sales managers, sales leaders listening to this, what are the things they need to start thinking about considering to start this journey? So when I started the journey, I was technically aware, but not technical, mm -hmm. right? I okay. had never sold software as a service. Yeah. I didn't understand journey marketing. I asked the question the five ways. I pushed myself to learn more, mm -hmm. to ask more questions, to review APIs, right? Yeah. Um, that was the key. So I think it's first, it's just like Excel, mm -hmm. learning macros, learning pivot tables. It's just willingness to avoid it a little bit less. You can yep. go to Outreach University, Sales Loft University. I talk mm -hmm. about Zant and Inside Sales. They all yep. have help desk. There's amazing courses like Cold Email Mastery from mm -hmm. Scott Britton, who's one of the founders of Troops.ai. There's the Josh Braun Guide. There's yep. these Flip the Script YouTube videos on personalization from Beck Holland. Mm -hmm. um, what's very interesting about these three people none of them code. They're just technically curious and you can be also. So the yeah. book just inspires you to say, I'm going to avoid this a little less. I'm going to become 5% better. I'm going to take a look at it mm -hmm. because if you have the willingness to first know that anyone can really master these platforms without having to write a lick of code. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's like what I don't want to do is I was once in a meeting of all the seniors in this company 
uh, these managers fill in all their world. They're like, well, it's amazing the results you're having with all the tech you're doing and you can do that, but there's no way anyone in the world is going to do that. <laughs> and that's just when you become competent, right? It's the same yeah. with social selling or anything. It's like, there's little nuances first, just, you know, make a decision that you're not only going to work on your, your IQ and, and that can be changed yeah. and EQ, we can be more empathetic and we can also change our TQ mm -hmm. and we can look at our tech systems and get better with them whether yeah. that's Slack or Google, you know, G Suite, Excel, or some of the more advanced platforms, which is really, you know, outreach, sales loft, Zoom info, your data sources, your, um, your targeting, your segmentation, your personalization, learning how to use things like curly brackets and customizations and personalization. On a rudimentary level, if you do any of this, out of a thousand messages that go out, mm -hmm. the other 999 are going to be like, hi, first name, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, right? Yeah. If you're just a little yeah. better, you're better than the next thousand sellers, right? And that's the thing to remember. So I wouldn't get discouraged. It's, it's like anything. If you're open to improving, you will. But then I think that, that you raise an interesting point here because that feels a very similar conversation when I had to, in my previous lives pitching to the, uh, the board of a NASDAQ company internally as to why they should invest, you know, north of $100,000 in Sales Navigator. And the response was, but you get it, Alex, but no one else in the firm does was. I was like, this is my entire point. We have to start somewhere and we need to invest in this technology to start this um, uh, this journey, but this then comes back to you know, I'm a big proponent of Carol Dweck and mindset theory. And I know Microsoft have kind of built their culture around that, moving people from this fixed kind of state to the growth mindset that it's okay to kind of try new things, do things differently. Um, I always talk about outputs, so whenever I'm talking about, I actually like the term social selling, everybody knows this, it's just sales and marketing for the 21st century. But I get people to think about output what output are we trying to, trying to, trying to achieve? generate business meetings. What was I trying to do 20 years ago when all I could do was cold call because that's all that existed, generate business meetings. What am I trying to do now? Exactly the same thing, nothing's changed. What has changed is, dare I say, the digitization of the sales process to get to that same output of this face-to-face -face sales conversation with your prospects and your targets to then take that into, um, uh, into revenue. So how do you how do you see you know the, the evolution and you've been in this and you live it and breathe it the evolution of kind of the, the SDR AE role to date because I think you know I've seen stats that X like north of sixty percent of reps aren't hitting their quota to, to that effect or something is is that a is that because the numbers are, t are wrong? Is that because they're not spending enough time um, selling and they don't have the uh, the TQ? Is that because the SDR AE structure is now no longer fit for purpose and in the modern world, what's what's your take on that? Well, so much to unpack that um, unpack there. I remember walking in Central Park and listening to Carol Dweck's amazing book, Mindset and Fix versus Growth. So that's very true. Satya Nadella, um, I think she consulted Microsoft as he mm -hmm. took over. So great reference there. Um, the fixed mindset is like, I'm either good at this or not. I'm just not technical. So okay. you know, these ideas from Justin is not going to work. They're social selling. Like I just don't believe it won't work. It's just not uh, really the truth. If you just have that decision point to grow, you mm -hmm. can. Um, we have a structure of SDR and AE that just makes sense. It's like mm -hmm. there's a group of openers, there's a group of closers. But you think of a great restaurant like Le Cirque in New York, like mm -hmm. the Mater D has been there for 20 years. The highest, you know, the person that understands everything about that restaurant is greeting you at the door, knows you by name, sits you at the table. You're going to have you know, a $300 meal or whatever, you know, in a different era. The issue we have now is we have people that are just starting their careers and they're tasked with going after the most senior prospects. So mm -hmm. there's full cycle AEs and they're making sequencing technology for these mm -hmm. folks. Groove just raised 12 million. You've got Zant, formerly inside sales, making this tech. Because there's this theory of like, we're just going to give, you know, the SDRs, the whiz bang tech, mm -hmm. uh, the millennials, and we're going to just do full cycle calling, and just piecemeal this. But the problem, as we, we talked about in the preamble here, is 70% of what sellers do can be automated. Okay. And 36% of the time spent selling. Now there's another huge tectonic shift or secular motion is that it's just way more affordable than ever to start a tech company. I always think of Michael Jackson recording Thriller mm -hmm. and like the soundboard was $10 million and the production was tens of millions of dollars. It was like a hundred million dollars to do an album of that scale. Well, now you can record that in your apartment for $5,000 with a few different tech systems. It's making a software as a service. You can be up and running in days, right? Mm -hmm. So then we have this other crazy motion where 
Uh, 40, and I talk about this in the book, 40% of the funding rounds in 2019 were hundred million dollar rounds. Mm -hmm. And that's because less and less companies have been going public and there's money in the secondary markets. But what happens to a company that raises 20 million plus? Uh-oh, we better figure out demand gen. Let's hire an army of SDRs. <laughs> so where are you going to get tons of SDRs? You're going to run out. You, you yep. can't hire people who have exper experience doing this. And so you bring in people and what do they do? They logically do uh, their nature. They, they reach out to people, hope you're doing well, reaching out and they start learning and the learning curve. As soon as they get great, they want to become an AE and you yep. lose them and they leave companies. And so uh, it's, you know, it's really crazy. I think there's new ways to design the sales teams mm -hmm. and the question, the opening and closing SDRE models. Um, there's ways to say, here is a system of how we sell and go to market inbound and outbound. Where can we apply machines and where can we apply the human? Yep. And how can we use tech stacks to free up the human? And so there's this new role emerging in companies, and for listening now, called revenue operations. Okay. And this is the nexus point or confluence between sales operations, marketing operations, and demand gen. Mm -hmm. And the, this is a person that comes in and deals with the tech stack fatigue, the bloat, the lack of interoperability, the systems don't talk. Um, but here's what's coming. Um, are we going to fuse man and machine with the singularity and put chips in our mind? I'm not sure. I may not live to see it. We don't have flying cars. The Ubers are not driving themselves yet. Okay. What I can tell you is automation and semi-automation is coming big time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And systems like Zant are kind of wild. They have a baseball card. You look at a prospect that says, this prospect typically spends 23K ACV, TCV, total contract, annual yeah. contract. This product, uh, this prospect using big data and predictive algorithms likes to get two in mails an email and a phone call mm -hmm. at these times. And so these systems can become predictive and smart and there can be middleware that predicts the next action. And there can be systems now that are built that you plug all the systems into almost like a minority report dashboard or Domo. Mm -hmm. But I am going to add the point about mindset to the book because the book has already been changed by the publisher from TQ. What's that? To tech powered sales. And I think that's really what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, that's what we're all doing here in 2020, whether we like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. The, 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 the new world, uh, the new world order. And I think that I've, and I come at it from a kind of, and, and the, the interesting thing is the U S market is, is very different to the, UK European market in terms of kind of outreach and et cetera, et cetera. And talking to, you know, senior leaders around the sales tech stack, the US is probably two years, three years ahead of the UK European market around this, this concept of, you know, things like sales loft coming in and outreach coming in still relatively new concepts. And you know, we talked about <clears throat> earlier working with a major, uh, huge SaaS company, you know, two year sales cycles, quarter of a million dollar average, um, uh, uh, revenue in terms of uh, deal size and you know some of the reps are saying I feel like I've got um, dashboard fatigue you know you touched on the minority thing because I've got so many things to kind of look at and do and some of them even jokes that you should do I go to my leader and go look do they want me to do just spend all day inputting or should I be actually um, actually out uh, selling and I guess there's always the great story. You've got Sales Navigator application programs, Snap, where they talk about everything that Sales Nav now sinks in. But again, when I talk to companies around this, I go, have you got this? Have you got this? Have you got this? Have you got this? Yes. Awesome. Right. Is it all synced? No, because of our security protocols, because IT says no. IT says it can't be done. I still feel there has to be a huge shift of understanding, even at the a leadership level, as to what this all means. Well, I completely agree with you that organizations that aren't thinking about this now in five, 10 years time will cease to exist or will be eaten up by, uh, by, small, by smaller things. So is this a C-suite conversation, do you think? I definitely think it needs to be driven at the C-suite and there needs to be studies around the ROI. For example, mm -hmm. in-mails have performed at 30% better than email. Yet, mm -hmm. because you have to do it slowly and you get 50 of them, you don't see a significant sample size. When you can send 200 emails a day out of sequencer, hey, look at all these meetings. Yeah. But when you're sending it a very low sample, you don't know. So if you use mm -hmm. them every month, you'll be amazed. And they yeah. work very well for C-levels, actually. I've had the chief product, product officer of famous companies reply to my email. And I'm like, see, I sent on my emails, right? Um, these technologies are coming for our jobs. It, it is real. It is happening whether we like it or not. I know there's a gentleman by the name of James Ski who's really involved with sales yeah. communities in mm -hmm. Europe, who's pushing outreach and, and sales mm -hmm. loft and automation. Um, my book, Technology Powered Sales or TQ, is about you mastering this now. 
Mm -hmm. I wrote about a Blade Runner future where it's all automated mm -hmm. and there's no top funnel and it's literally like the bots are writing emails and have passed the Turing test. The CEO told me, well, the minute the email can be perfectly synthesized and personalized, the world governments will say, you need a warning label. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> what a great email from Dustin Michael. This email was personalized by a machine. Email written by Siri. You know what I mean? And so yeah. are we applying machine learning and AI to the right problem? Mm -hmm. um, here's the issue. If you and I are both the same level of closing skills and we're both crushing our quota in a president's club and I'm going gangbusters on this automation technology and you're not, I'm going to outrun you. It's like if a bear is chasing us and I have a motor scooter and you have running cleats, like game over. Like there's been resistance to fire, to the wheel, to the internet, to the horseless mm -hmm. carriage. I've had some people look at my book and be like, you're, you're John Connor, like this is Cyberdyne Systems and Skynet. I actually have funny little groups. I do a lot of Terminator themes just for yeah. fun. I'm in these WhatsApp channels with leaders all over the world. I've had over a thousand thought leaders look in this book. Um, you know, it's pretty, pretty interesting. So if you embrace it and you work with the technology you have now and you become curious about ways to do this, you can be the change that you're looking to see in the organization. You can work up through the champions of RevOps and through your chief revenue officer and you can bring in case studies from Gong and Chorus and the, the research coming out of Sales Loft and Outreach. And you can bring in uh, significant investments and you can test this tech. Almost all the vendors will say, let's do a test. You can test the data source. You can test a sequencer model and you can prove it out. And it's the same way that, you know, for Sales Navigator. Yeah. Drag it in your CRM yeah. system. These are all the leads that came out of social selling. It's inexorable. You can't really fight. 5 million in new pipeline that's derived from using LinkedIn in this new way because it's right there. It's quantifiable. So it's yeah. really about an RI driven business case and championing that internal. Some of this stuff's ephemeral. It's like Twitter. It's like, what is really the ROI of branding? The yeah. beauty of sales tools is you plug it in and you look at it before and after and you either drove more pipeline or you didn't. So it's a little bit binary. <laughs> No, you're, you're, you're right, I'm at, you know, 100%. But it's interesting in terms of, you know, you touched on the Alan Turing test and the CEO saying the minute that you can get an email that doesn't look like it's come from a, a bot, you know, it's going to have to have a warning label. Do you believe there is a risk that people will use automation and they will use, I was just talking to an ex-CTO of professional services at Microsoft last week um, around kind of AI, and he's talking about lazy AI. And lazy AI on poor data actually can be could be really damaging for um uh, for a brand because it takes you off onto a direction of travel that you don't know. And sellers, broad brush strokes, sales get get a bad rap in terms of being lazy, and we're always trying to get the shortest routes to the quickest um the quickest outcome. And I think there's a quote that either sat, you know, Bill Gates used something if, uh, something similar around. I would always find a lazy person to try and solve a problem because they will try and get the shortest route to that. But with automation comes the risk that if it's not done properly, you're just going to be spamming the market with crap. And then that could blow back in terms of RevOps and this and the kind of all technologies that, well, actually, this has actually caused us more damage than actually has done good. Yeah. So um, it is really interesting because the best engineers are often procrastinating and lazy because they're trying to figure out how to never have to solve the problem again. They'd rather spend hundreds of hours to figure out how to eliminate the work right because they're trying to reduce workloads which is kind of crazy um yeah lazy ai i mean here's the thing we need to apply the current state of artificial intelligence machine learning now and you can see mm -hmm. outreach is sort of yep. a leader mm -hmm. using kaya k-a-i-a -A, which is mm -hmm. knowledge assistance artificial intelligence we're not in the terms of true ai but imagine this during this zoom call there is a shell that's pulled up your crm notes and google sheets and your social and it's at the bottom like a stock ticker Mm -hmm. doing real-time queuing. It's also running natural language processing around what you're saying. It's crunching the big data of what you're saying, comparing it to all the other calls and saying, Justin, mention this value, mention yeah. this competitive. So it's now going to be that Jarvis Iron Man assistant, the Terminator 2 screen, yeah. <laughs> um, right? With the AI assistance, I think is the next era. Because getting the automation technology to write our emails for us, is less helpful than the concept of a self-driving Uber where you're sitting in the, in the Uber. It's like, okay, the car is driving itself. Now the car is driving at a wall turn. So yeah. wouldn't it be cool if as I'm trying to personalize my sequences in these uh, touch pattern systems and these sales engagement systems, if it's so smart, it fans out across LinkedIn, fans out across the CRM. And as I'm writing, suggest personalized with this, yeah. personalized with that. I've looked at something called Great Insight. There's some technologies that basically 
give you snippet recommendations. Hey, here's like a funding event or an innovation event. And it starts pulling in that sales navigator data into these, the email writing zone mm -hmm. to kill you, to give you ideas. This is where I think the big data can be applied now. And so I, we could go through a series of what I think it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, sales engineers today is what a seller is in the future. In the okay. future, the salesperson is a data analyst yeah. who's, a, who's training algorithms. Uh, the seller of the future may be writing code. I know this is a uh, third rail, right? Python, Node.js, R. Yeah. They may be using Tableau or Looker or mm -hmm. you know, Redshift, these big uh, data analysis systems just for the targeting. They might be using intent data from Bombora where yeah. they're trying to figure out a surge. Now, I've got case studies in the book from Lars Nilsson from Salesforce, who was a, a VP of sales development at Cloudera. He's the father of ABSD. If you've heard of ABM, account-based marketing, we yep. flip it and we do account-based sales development. This is the mind-shattering, bonkers concept of naming the accounts that you want to go after. <laughs> I did a billion-dollar industry in one sentence, right? It's Again, right, 20 years ago, it's no different. But there's a regionalized thing that happened in the 90s and the aughts where you just kind of went wild, loosey-goosey, spray and pray. Yeah. All these things they're saying is we can now name exactly the ICP, the ideal customer profile, the IPP, the ideal prospect profile, mm -hmm. and we can laser in on exactly who we want to contact. And then by persona, we have personalization and case studies that are relevant, right? So if yep. you're going after financial services, there's your financial case study. The airlines is different. Healthcare is different. And we reflect that in our messaging and outbound. Um, so that's where I think personalization, machine learning, and AI for now can work. Mm -hmm. There's that demo of Google Duo where it calls a small yeah, business. Cool. And it's not a human, right? Like we have deep fake technology. I always joke, like I could literally skin myself right now as Robert De Niro yeah. or Chewbacca. Like I could have, Zoom could be going nuts here. I could have morphing technology. <laughs> but do prospects want to be fooled? No. No. I think a prospect is cool with, hey, they used AI to make it more relevant. It's like advertising. I love on Amazon that you know, you know, the last five books I read and then boom, you serve me this really cool book. Wow. That is exactly what I'm interested in. Yeah. Completely. I'm a, little, I'm a little okay with the privacy thing if, if I'm opting in and I'm giving you information to make that advertising better. So if I think if we're using AI and ML, not to spam harder or do more touches, but to make it better, yeah. then I think prospects worldwide feel their privacy is secure mm -hmm. and they're having an experience that's more relevant. And that's where you stand out from the noise. I think you, 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 I'm in the same boat in terms of I'm happy to give data, but it's going to be a better personalized experience. My brother works in the world of programmatic um, advertising. It's insane. The type of stuff that they can now, um, uh, they now do. I was chatting to Rob Coyne, who was at Hootsuite. He's now at Thunderhead around journey cost, customer journey orchestration, which yeah. is a fascinating, you know, technology. Which uh, you know, someone like uh, the the New York Mets, for example. Um, forgive me, I don't know if any teams in in your own part of the world, but you have a you know super fan who's got the app. They go to the game, they scan the ticket, they go to the store, they buy a shirt, they log into the website. So they start to map both physical and digital touch points and start to create that entirely unique and bespoke experience for that um that individual and you know i'm all for it because i think the the more personal it becomes i've got a five-year-old daughter and um you know i think mother care unfortunately no longer in uh, in business but i remember ages ago i'd obviously given her details somewhere and felt a little uncomfortable with that but then the subject of the email wouldn't olivia look great in this of course i opened it because it was straight to the emotional kind of uh, the carnal piece uh, piece here um i my 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 thought on all of this is I think think we still have a hell of a long way to go with the majority of sales leaders, sales enablement to even have a vet. And I know this is what your book is trying to to answer and, and do, but I still believe we have a hell of a long way to go for people to actually understand half of what's being discussed today. And I talk about Bombora to CMOs, never heard of it. Intent data. What are you talking about? I'm like, what? I use Bombora, it's freaking awesome. And sometimes I even screen grab the little message that goes to the prospect going, well, someone in your organization is searching what we do because <laughs> here's the data to, um, uh, to prove it. So what, based on what you're, and, and obviously you, you are at the, dare I say, bleeding edge of all of this because you've written, written the book. But again, if we kind of take a step back to the kind of the, the Joe average, if you will, Jane average, if you will, what are you seeing on your, your side of the world around, you know, how sales leaders in the big organizations are reacting to all of this? 
Yeah, so I have set out to write the sequel to Predictable Revenue, and it's not about revenue or mm -hmm. prospecting, and it's not even dovetailing that. I've seen so many attempts of books, mm -hmm. but I figured that it's the tech stacks. It's like, whoa, what is a seller doing? They're sitting on Sales Navigator, LinkedIn Premium, and then they can't get the email address, so they have to go into Zoom Info or in Europe, Lucia or Cognizum. And then after 20 or 30 personalizations, they have to figure out a way to automate. And even like, I love this word Luddite, and there's a fun history there. Yeah. There yeah. even, it's amazing the tech stack that a non-technical person still has. So I don't think there is Joe Average. I think we all have Slack and, you know, you know we all have Google and all these yeah. social networks that aren't easy. Everyone's on, you know, Instagram or WhatsApp, or it depends on the adoption for country. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of remarkable how many tech stacks and systems a person who says, I don't use technology. Even a lot of the thought leaders who are pro calling only and going old school are just just bonkers on social media, right? Yeah. Um, the future right now, there's a term called hyper personalization. Mm -hmm. And this is doing something a machine cannot do. And uh, I don't know if I'm diverting off the question, so I want to get back to it. But Jeremy Donovan talked about this. I watch a YouTube video of the prospect, and I can say, at minute six and 16 seconds, you said this. Mm -hmm. Now, you can make machines that'll find that, but it's pretty hard. And, and it doesn't exist. So if you can do things that differentiate yourself, I love that book, The Purple Cow from Seth Godin, yep. Pattern Interrupts. Do this, go to your colleagues or your CEO, start reading their subject lines. Look in their inbox on LinkedIn, look in their email box if they'll show you, and you'll mm -hmm. see this, reaching out, hope you're doing well, sync, sync, yeah. a few minutes of your time. And it's so homogenized, homogeneous, yeah. anyway, it's like so similar, it, it will blow your mind. So if you can be different and hyper-personalized and beat the machine for now, yeah. that's a way to stick out. But your question was different. It was more about, I think, um, change management well, it's the change management, just that even, and I, I, I agree with you in terms of, it's not kind of Joe Average in terms of, because we, yeah, we are all surrounded by this, this technology. It's, I suppose it's kind of almost going back to a, a question you've already answered around the, the mindset piece, is that it's, it's all here. But this, is, and especially thinking of the current climate we're in, the, in at the moment with COVID and everything, this is, whilst I believe we should be doing this right now, I still think we're, I personally think we're a way off leadership really getting their head around all of this. But I could be wrong, I don't know. So here's the beauty. A lot of these technologies, you can get a hang of for like, I don't know, I, I, I don't know British pounds. I'm not going to get this right. But hundred bucks, hundred bucks in whatever currency. But this stuff's like the price of a cell phone. So ambitious reps might put it on their own credit card and say, look, boss, I'm going to try this out or get a mm -hmm. test or a trial. You start using it, you start getting a little results, you creep in with the good ideas, like, mm -hmm. you know, and then suddenly you start getting those results, right? And then a few friends start, and then you're now you're on a license and they bring the technology in. So maybe they pull budget from marketing, maybe they pull it from enablement. But what we find is 15% of high growth companies are spending money on these tech stacks, in some cases over a thousand per rep per month. And that's everything, right? That's your dialer, your telephony, your Zoom, yeah. like your conferencing, if you do the whole layer cake. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's 500 if you purely look at the tech stack. To get adoption, you just have to start using this stuff. So become curious, um, read my book, mm -hmm. shameless plug, but I also yeah, have a That's syllabus. why we're doing this, right? I want yeah. people to read your book. <laughs> yeah, there's, really what I'm trying to do is unleash an idea virus, right? I'm trying to ignite a spark to bring the whole world across early adopter, adopter and just disruptive tech into saying, here's a way to mechanize and weaponize the top funnel for good. Because if we keep a humane approach for people, planets, and profit, and we do it well, mm -hmm. if we prototype, here's messaging once, and if you care, and now how do I scale that? Can I do personalization relevance and timing at scale? The answer is yes. The answer is Bombora data was available three years ago. Mm -hmm. you know, frankly, I was doing all this stuff three years ago, and the technology has only advanced at a, at a thousand miles an hour. You know, It's pretty crazy. And there's all these tiny little startups that are niche players that are disrupting little pieces, right? Um, so yes, I, so there's a couple things. One, you're sitting in an organization right now and you're like, ah, oh, the powers that be won't let me do that. The budgets are cut, they're frozen, we can't do that. Mm -hmm. Well, explore in the book a lot of the free ways to do it because there's a bunch of like nearly free ways you can still do this stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's, it's somewhat of a buyer's guide. It's somewhat of a call to action. It's, it's kind of 
bridging the gap between the non-technical and the technical, I also have a, a lot of very advanced case studies. So there was this amazing book called Hacking Sales by Max Altschuler, mm -hmm. who writes Sales Hacker, and I'm going to start yeah. uh, publishing on there too. And he went tool by tool through the landscape. And what's crazy, I talked to him like, it's time for the second edition. Because even in the last five years, the explosion, yeah. the Cambrian yeah. explosion of vendors. And so I'm writing for the future. I'm like writing this book for 2025 and 2030. And I'm going to keep a copy of it on constant edit. Yeah. Because in two years, there's going to be so much, you know, M&A and merger and acquisition around this space. It's going to be uncanny. No, 100%, 100% agree. And if I even think just in the world of, of, of social, the journey I've been on, you see the iterations of sales navigation, the types of conversations I'm having now and the technology that I'm having to keep up to date with and you know, following people like yourself, um, it's completely insane. And obviously with what's happened in the current climate, you know, everyone's saying that we've had five years of digital transformation in three months. <laughs> and exactly. we're not going to, this is, you know, Pandora's box has been opened if, if you... Um, uh, if you will, because you're recognizing the humanitarian crisis that is happening, but the good that's going to come out of this and the organizations that recognize this and build off what, and I'm, I mean this with the greatest respect to every, anybody that's been impacted by COVID-19, but the opportunity this has created for some organizations and some business, I believe could be, you know, could be massive once we understand where the bottom of the market is and we start to, um, uh, we start to kind of tick, uh, tick up. Um, I could talk to you forever on this. Um, yeah. How can, where can people find you? What's the best place for people to find you, to reach out to you for the want to learn more? Yeah, so I'm just at Justin Michael on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a regional vice president of a company called UAPI that plays in the spaces you're talking about, like programmatic user acquisition and advertising technology. I'm an operator that's been in a dozen startups and consulted hundreds more um, really through that ambitious project of Outbound Works. So you can find me on LinkedIn. The cool. book will be a pre-order in October and coming out next year. Awesome. And what's really beautiful about the book is I went to the front lines. I went to the rep level and the C levels in the tech companies and the analysts and Forrester. And I've got stuff uh, from all angles, right? Tech powered sales here. Mark Andreessen said software is eating the world. There's a vast overcorrection in 1999 when the first bubble burst and all of technology is like less output than like cardboard. Like we're still like a speculative little industry tech and it's everywhere and it gets, but these, you know, the, companies that are worth trillions in valuation i think there's four stocks that are, are there including like amazon and microsoft and google like a lot of the value creation is coming out of software tech powered sales is the future even if you didn't think about it till you listen to this youtube you're like oh yeah i have the stack so i always say like bring out your stack like i'll do monty python bring out your dead right i'm gonna quote i was like life of brian or holy grail <laughs> but the problem is we all have a tech stack, whether we like it or not, because we're all strapped to the third appendage. And so I'll make another yeah. crazy prediction by, you know, 2035, this thing is going away. Yeah. It's going to be holograms. And we're in the fourth industrial revolution. And just like the first industrial revolution, there are some inhumane things inadvertently happening to us by the industrial complex that the technology is putting on the human being. And, there are there are tech so i walk through these texts in the book awesome. but if you're doing calling right now if you're calling because of robocalls and spam you're going to get five humans out of 100. yeah so you need calling automation like connect and sell and connect leader and aura thousands of calls data like zoom info these giant databases so you can get 20 connects a day again imagine that life at a thousand dollars a day yeah. if you're emailing manually why personalize at scale you know, send 150 emails a day, humanely personalized to the right people, warm it up, get it right. You can't not be social selling. There's 700 million people on LinkedIn, yeah. right? So you need a social selling approach. You need a BI system that gives you email and phone number. You need a way to programmatically pre-program the touches in a sequencer and sales engagement. You then need to be hip to bots. You, your website just sitting there, without yeah. AI interacting on front site, you're missing the inbound funnel. Yeah. Um, how about coaching? It is, are you recording all your calls and you know, obviously opting in for that? Um, yeah, so luckily I've sold data. <laughs> so like I understand GDPR, I, I've read manuals full. I was actually part of like the Mobile Marketing Association where mm -hmm. they just sent you a phone book yeah. And, you know, after like 12 hours, you try to send one text message. It was insane in the year of mobile in 2007. So I've been following this stuff forever. Um, so this is just a clarion, clarion call. Yeah. Um, 
you know, it's, uh, it's not the end of the world. Get to know your tech. Get you read this book, tech. three and a half hours is 60,000 words. You will be 5% better by reading it once. Awesome. Pick a few things in it, apply it, and it could revolutionize your whole organization. And uh, that's what I'm all about. Hopefully, it's a return to innocence. It's a return to selling. What we should be doing as the human yeah. is this all day long. And so if you're sitting there, like you said, those reps who are just stifled, like, ah, CSV files, like, yeah. I'm trying to do this import and it broke. I'm trying to learn this other technology system, right? We always joke, um, me and my friends are involved in this stuff, like a brain trust. It's like AFL, another friggin' login, or FNAC, which yeah. is a feature, not a company. <laughs> what we're going to see in the next two to five years with billions in investment is adoption, yeah. where this stuff is table stakes, and we're going to see holistic systems. And what's crazy about outbound prospecting is that it's always a question, is it divergence or convergence, mm -hmm. right? Are we going to converge all our technology where our internet's on our fridge and we get smart notifications? Whirlpool's working on it. But yeah. the truth is it's divergence. Like all the channels still work. Cold calling still works to a mm -hmm. degree. Social works. And there's all these like rap battles on the internet of like UK versus America. Like is it, you know, Daniel Disney, is it social selling? Is it yeah. cold calling? It's all of it, all of it. Yeah, I know. with machines making it far smarter. Uh, so then here's the problem. If we all are using the automation and we're all calling at scale and emailing at scale, what happens to the prospect? Well, in the Fortune 1000, I remember this uh, retail company, they just turned the switchboard off. Many <laughs> people have a different email address. When you're contacting the decision maker, it's not right. them. It's an executive assistant or agent trying to buffer um, so I believe the future of B2B sales is actually closed pay for play Slack groups where the vendors go in and pay a fee and the C level, the CMO goes, Hey, I want to disrupt myself. If they're vetted and they pay this fee and they're in there, I want to know, let's talk Yeah. because LinkedIn is so noisy and email is so noisy and the calls. I just, can I pay for a relevant group where you Alex curate it so that the right people are in this little private community. So I think like hyper niche, Pay for play communities might be the savior of B2B, but that's another prediction. <laughs> that I feel like is a whole new podcast to get to you, uh, get you on. <laughs> um, that's been awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Justin. I really, really appreciate it. I'll put the links into your um, link to your profile where you've got a, a preview of your book, I believe, which people can um, check out. Um, and then when the pre order yeah. there is, is done, that'd be, uh, that'd be awesome. Uh, if you're listening to this podcast and uh, mention it when you, when you reach out to, uh, to Justin, uh, anything like that would be awesome. Uh, to everybody listening, thank you so much for tuning in. To everybody watching, awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. But Justin, absolute pleasure. Uh, it's been great chatting to you. Stay safe. And uh, I'll, see you, uh, I'll see you online, I guess. Thanks. I, I've been following you for seven years. I'm a huge fan of your work and your, and your posts. It's really an honor to be a part of this. I'm not saying I'm the best seller in the world. I'm here to help you become just a little bit better by, uh, <laughs> you know, embracing, embracing your tech. So yeah, thanks for the time today. And, uh, brilliant. I don't know what to say. I need some great English expression. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it there. Awesome. Justin. Thank you.